Why did your father decide to open a distillery in Norfolk? He always claimed a passion for whiskey and his, if you asked him that, the, question, the answer was always the same, that his, grand, his father, my grandfather, had made a passway comment about such a shame that barley had to go all the way to Scotland to be turned into something useful. And it just stuck. And I think ever since then, he knew he wanted to make whiskey. Did people think he was a little eccentric for making English whiskey? I think there was definitely a degree of that. Certainly locally. I mean, you'll never know what the rest of the country thought. But he was always a bit of a wanderlust, if you like. You know, if there was a different idea, he was off to go and do it. So while, yes, a bit mad at times, I think everyone believed he'd do it. Were you surprised by the level of demand for your first release? With hindsight, probably no, because we'd had a lot of press. But at the time, we, it was staggering. On the day we did our release, still back then and still today, we opened to the public at 10 o'clock in the morning. They started arriving at 6, 6.30. There was snow on the ground. There was a queue that went from this door all the way around the distillery to the warehouses. And it, it, was, it was extraordinary. I mean, we were running teas and coffees up and down the waiting line. Um, so, yeah, we were completely taken aback. With hindsight, we had so much press. It pro yeah, we've never managed to achieve that level of press again, so probably was to be expected, but we weren't ready for it at all. Is it exciting to you that English whiskey is now a category? I think, yes, it's exciting. And it's exciting to be at the forefront of it. You know, it's lovely to be the father of an industry, if you like. But the more important thing is we're finding it, it becomes easier. So if you have, for example, when we first started, we, on Masters of Malt, we'd have been lumped into other whiskey. Whereas all of a sudden there's enough of us to get an actual English whiskey category. And that, that just makes life easier. And the same in actual physical shops. If you have a section that says English whiskey, people know what they're looking at and where, and where it's from. Whereas when we first started, you'd sort of be lumped together with every type of whiskey from around the world, probably on a high shelf or a low shelf. So it's definitely becoming more accepted and that makes it easier for us, which makes the growth better and yeah, makes the whole thing more exciting. Does being part of such a young category as English whiskey give you the freedom to innovate? To a degree, um, we probably don't make full use of that leeway. When father started it, we're quite unusual in so much as there are no investors, there's no banks required, and therefore we have no timescale. And his only concern was to make the very finest whiskey, you know, a world-class single malt. And therefore you, he set out to do that using methods that are proven. So we have a traditional double distillation distillery built by Forsyth, who are considered one of the finest still makers. And we, have, we stick to the Scottish rules. I mean, they're, they're there and within reason, they stop inferior liquid being made. We can test the grounds a bit. Obviously we can use, in theory, other types of wood other than oak. We can bottle and move whiskey around. In reality, we don't. We like to keep everything on site. We don't send whiskey off to other warehouses because who knows what could happen. And we bottle on site and that we keep control of the product. And that, whereas, and I think those rules that are laid down by the SWA and actually are really only copied into EU rules. So it doesn't matter where you make whiskey in the EU, you still have to keep it in wood for three years. You still have to obey a various set of rules. And yes, so there is leeway in what we can do, but in reality, we tend to stick relatively close to traditional whiskey making. I see you've had a very smart shop and a restaurant that opened in recent years. Um, can you tell me a bit about that and how important tourism is to you? I think that was the bit that took us by surprise when we first set out to build the distillery. Still got the original business plan. We expected 1,500 visitors a year. I mean, it's just, it, it was instantly more than that. And we got to about 45,000 people a year 
with just the distillery, but we were giving people tea and a slice of cake. But there comes a point, once you decide you are a tourist business, that people want a new experience, and you've got to give them something more. So the obvious step was to open a restaurant, uh, which we've done. And I think it works well. It brings in a different clientele. We have people turning up to use the restaurant that have no interest in whiskey and would never have visited the distillery if I hadn't been there. And I'm sure in a couple of years' time, we'll have to come up with something else, be it a roller coaster or uh, something. <laughs> but that, there has to be constant things for people to come and have a look at. Can you tell me about any exciting new things you've got coming up? Um, well, somewhat obviously top secret. But we have... I think the best thing that would be coming up, depends when the video comes out, should England win this weekend, we'll definitely do a special whiskey for them. But uh, in the true commercial side, we have thing, uh, whiskies going in the warehouse. We might not see for a few years, but with different grains, different cast types. So there's a constant round of experimentation in there to see what's good and what's not. And I think that's for any distillery. That is the primary goal of seeking new things. But yes, most of it's secret till it comes out. And finally, do you have a favourite expression from the English Whiskey Company? The hardest question, isn't it? Um, I used to. We used to do a whisky called Chapter 7, which is a rum cask these days. It's in our small batch uh, range. And it was really the, the whisky I drank all the time. As time goes on, I think, I don't know, must be getting older, that becomes less of a favourite. And I, I do spread my whisky drinking around a bit more. Our grain whiskies, I like. And actually, if I've got mates over at home, they're a really good intro. For those that don't drink whiskey, they seem to be the ones that are the easiest to get people into whiskey. So, no, I still have a little soft spot for our rum cask whiskey. It reminds me of rum and raisin ice cream. But in reality, I, I will happily drink all of them these days. Andrew, thank you for taking the time to talk to us at Master of Malt about the English Whiskey Company. Oh, it's been a pleasure. I hope you've seen lots and it's slightly, you know, different from other distilleries.